Let's find the state variable uh, description for this mass spring damper system. Where well, we already know the input output form, but we're going to actually start from scratch here. And we want to define two states, Z1 and Z2, because we have two energy storing elements, the spring and the mass. And again, I'm going to use my triangle equals just to be clear when we're de defining something. So we want uh, to define one state for the energy storing variable for the spring. 1 half kx squared is the energy, so we'll just use x as our first state. And then 1 half mv squared, or x dot squared, is the uh, energy for the mass. And so we're going to use x dot, or you can call it v, for the second state. So we've defined two states. We also have an in input f, and we're generically going to use the letter u to denote the input. That's just going to mean the same thing as f. And then we're told that the output for our system is just going to be x, the position. And generically, let's just use the variable y to talk about the outputs. And y, of course, is also going to be equal to x. Actually, I should say z1. So the idea is that we have z used all the time for our states, u for our inputs, and then y for our, our output. So I'll just write that up at the top here. We still need to write our state derivative equation. And remember that we have the sum of the forces is equal to f minus kx minus b x dot. All of that is equal to m times x double dot. And we need to write a state derivative equation only in terms of our states. So uh, let's just be clear on what the correspondences are. f is the same thing as u, x is the same thing as z1 x dot is the same thing as z2. And then mx double dot, that's actually going to be the same as z dot. So when we write our state derivative equation, z2 dot, that's going to be equal to negative k over m times z1 plus negative b over m times z2 plus 1 over m times u. We also need a state derivative equation for z1 dot. z1 dot is just going to be x dot, which actually is just equal to z2. So I'm going to write the equation this way. 0 times z1 plus 1 times z2 plus 1 times u. Sorry, u, 0 times u. And the reason why I write it this way is just to be clear that our state derivative equations are all in the form of using the z's and the u. Uh, all at the same time. So there's our state derivative equations. And we can, of course, also write this in the matrix form. And the matrix form, again, in general, is that we have some vector of z's where their state derivative is a times z plus b times u. And then what I didn't show you before, but we'll show you now, is that the output is also going to be defined in terms of the states as c times z plus d times u. So what's our A matrix going to be? So if you recall how matrix multiplication works, A times z is uh, going to be written as 0, 1, negative k over m, negative b over m. Where did that come from? Our first row of the A matrix is just going to be the coefficients of z1 and z2, 0 and 1. And then the second row is just going to be negative k over m and negative b over m. And this is because this vector is actually the same thing. I should note this vector z dot would be the same as z1 dot and z2 dot. What's our b matrix? Our b matrix is going to be 0 and 1 over m. The c matrix is just defining our output as z1. So that's going to be equal to 1 times z1 plus 0 times z2. And then our d matrix, the output doesn't actually include the u at all, so that's just going to be equal to 0.